Everton well after resting most of their regular players in midweek Carling Cup ties both managers revert to more familiar lineups this afternoon for West Bromwich Albion Brian Robson sticks with the side which earned a last gasp point at Sunderland last weekend Robert Earnshaw keeps his place up front ahead of Nathan Ellington Charlton's Alexi Smertin, who was forced to sit out last Saturday's defeat at Chelsea because of his loan conditions, returns to the Addicts midfield. Brian Hughes drops down to the bench. Darren Bent looks to add to his six goals this season as second-place Charlton seek a fourth successive away victory. So second-place Charlton against West Bromwich Albion struggling down at the bottom massive game for uh, both clubs with their differing ambitions this season both of them had uh, good midweek uh, cup wins albeit with rather different teams alongside me in the commentary position this afternoon for this one Tony Gale yeah very interesting game in store John I think West Bromwich Albion let's put for the points I think picked up after their good end to last season in Jolton I don't think anybody could have anticipated the great start they've had. And obviously this system that they're playing this year is suiting them down to the ground. It's not suited everyone in the Premiership, but for Charlton's purposes, with Bent just on his own up front, it suited them very, very well. Yeah, and it hasn't been the negative stuff that many people have been talking about from Charlton Athletic this season with this 4-5-1. Anyway, here's Earnshaw, who uh, destroyed them last season at the Valley, finding Greening. Swinging it away across to the far side. The header is in by Gera. It's away by Harideson. Now Thomas will bring it forward for Charlton. Dispossessed. It's Danny Murphy. All rather scruffy in midfield at the moment. Andy Johnson just knocking it out of play on the full. Well, I expect to see a few more of those crossfield balls that you just saw from Jonathan Greening because on the other side, Zoltan Gear is one of the best headers of the ball of his type, wide players in the Premiership. Ramadal is offside. The flag went up a little late on the far side, but it did go up. Yeah, just going back to Gear on the other side. There you've got Ramadal in shot, who just had straight offside, but Zoltan Gear are very, very strong in the air. Scored with his head last week and uh, much. It's a ploy, really, of Albion just to hit those diagonal balls out on the wide, and I think Chris Powell's going to really have his hands full to keep him quiet this afternoon. Greening putting Robinson under a little bit of pressure. And he's not the ball out of play on this near side. Very difficult down there in the dugout, and I think that's a good reason for Allen coming up here with Keith Peacock to get it on that ground level. Sometimes you can't get... Well, a true perspective of how the game's panning out tactically. And by coming up there early on, if he needs to make changes, he'll certainly be running down there to Mervyn very, very sharpish. There's Ronnie Warwick trying to release Earnshaw, but it's gone straight through to uh, Powell. A little glimpse of an opening there, though, possibly for West Bromwich Albion in what's been a fairly quiet opening seven minutes. Javert had to shield his eyes from the sun as he headed that ball forward. This is Powell, left-hand side. All of that patient midfield work Tony Gale was talking about. That's great play by Jerome Thomas. Oh, and is that a penalty kick? The Charlton fans think it should have been. Not sure what the referee's pointing at. I think he has given a penalty. Jerome Thomas brought down. Chris Foy. No doubt at all, John, was he? Straight away. It's a great turn. Turns on Robinson and gets in there. It's a super turn, you see. Gets in there, into the box. It's on Steve Watson, actually, and he brings him down. There's no doubt about it. A great turn by Jerome Thomas. Just let it roll across his body. Got in the box. Steve Watson, a clear penalty. The Charlton weren't awarded a single penalty last season. But they have the chance now with Danny Murphy. He scored superbly calmly. And Charlton Athletic, whose season has been so successful so far, have made a wonderful start today. 
Well, well taken penalty from Danny Murphy, certainly, but there's Steve Watson who gave away the penalty. It's a clear penalty for me. He gets too tight, and as soon as he's getting, he's got a run on him, he gets in the area, and there you can see he gets his front foot and he's down. It's a definite penalty for me. And here you see Danny Murphy coolly stepping up, sending the keeper the wrong way, 1-0 to Cholton. Alexis Martin, to sit out last week's game against Chelsea. And Jerome Thomas, who's one led to the penalty, goes on another. Smertin again, here's Darren Bent. Amadal. All in, Murphy! Ooh, good save by Chris Kirkland, or it would have been 2 0. Was a good save as well, it was an awkward save, it pitched just in front of him. It was switched from the left to the right hand side. Cross eventually comes in from Romadal. Murphy gets in between the centre backs, heads it down. That's an excellent save because that's pitching at the feet of Kirkland. Awkward area, great save. Good header too, and Murphy himself is going to take the corner. Away by Zoltan Gira at the near post. They really are picking off Albion at, at will. I mean, you can see in midfield when they get the ball. Again on that left-hand side, Thomas just goes up a gear. Just comes maybe sometimes on his left-hand side where he got the penalty the first time round. This time round, he came on the right-hand side. And at the moment, they're keeping the ball far better than Albion. It's an anxious, if not quite despairing look from Brian Robson, shaking his head. It's not going for his team at the moment at all. Charlton. Very close to going 2 0 up. Daniel Murphy close to getting the second of the game. This is Luke Young. A recent inter England international, of course. Winning a throw there off Greening. Andy Johnson upfield for West Brock. Campbell's beaten by Horadison. Again, look, composure from Charlton in tight areas, keeping the ball, just going in, coming out, two, three, four passes, here they go again, much more composed than Albion, Albion have really got to get in amongst them in that midfield area, rush them into a few mistakes and bounce off of maybe nicking possession off of them because they really are struggling to build up themselves and that's probably the first time they gave it away, it was a throw-in. Jerome Thomas on another of those runs, trying to guide it across towards Romadale. They get a second chance, Thomas. Ball slightly overhit. Powell stretching those uh, 36 year old legs to try and reach the ball, but not quite able to. He won't thank Thomas for that. And he acknowledges it wasn't the best of passes. Well, 36 or 16, he was never going to get that. Again, coming, roaming around Thomas, getting into a great position. Just an easy ball on, and he overhits it by four or five yards. And as I say, a 16-year-old wouldn't have caught that, let alone a 36-year-old Powley. He's enjoying his football, though, in his second spell at Charlton Athletic. Here's Luke Young. Bent is a willing runner up front. Good tackle, though, by Robinson. Oh, I thought it was, and referee's decided it wasn't. No, he hasn't, he's given a throw. <laughs> I was right all along. I think the referee took him to throw a foul there, but uh, play continues. It's a nice ball slip through to Luke Young. Cleverly into Romadal. Romadal square. Thomas! Oh, what a wonderful goal that would have been. And Chris Kirkland has made his second excellent save of the game. Well, he's keeping Albion in it at the moment. Another good move. Building up down the right hand side. Romadal cuts it back. Thomas gets his shot in, right foot shot. It's a save that he would have expected to make, but nonetheless, it's a good one. Here you see, just trying to curve it for that far corner, but perhaps a little bit too straight. And Jerome Thomas's last goal for Charlton was a stunning effort against Tottenham Hotspur. Back in March. He's close there. Here's the corner then. Murphy with it. Solid header. Coming in at the near post from Herman Horidison, but wide. Great pace in the corner from Murphy. A little bit of curve and dip on it, allowing Horidison to really attack it. He's already made one great save down at his feet, and this one's high up. Good save from Kirkland. It was a little tip, a little bit too straight, maybe a little bit dramatic. 
with a fall afterwards. That's two excellent saves to keep Albion in the game. Well, the stadium announcer at the Hawthorns, when he was reading out the teams, announced uh, Chris Kirkland as England's number one. And what you do hope is that uh, he stays injury free because uh, Paul Robinson obviously is the England number one. But this fella, I think Tony has possibly got an England future if he can avoid these niggling back injuries that he's had. Well, I think it's all exactly right, John, all down to his fitness, because everybody says who've worked with him, and Joe Corrigan has worked with him very closely, what a great prospect he is. Now he's got the chance of first-team football, that's what he needs. He needs a good season under his belt, because if he's to fulfil that potential, it will be brilliant, especially for England at the moment. Yeah, he's still only 24 years old, Kirkland. And Brian Robson actually denied this week that uh, there was a recurring problem with his back. There were rumours that he might be doubtful for this match, but he is fit, says the Albion boss. And certainly on today's showing, he certainly is, yeah. Meanwhile, up the other end, there's been redundancy for Stefan Anderson. He really hasn't had a thing to do so far. And here's gear up. Now Greeny. Turns away from Young, chips the ball into the box. And there's a fairly routine piece of goalkeeping for Stefan Anderson. Routine. You know, everybody goes on about these 4-5-1 systems, but largely they're leaving one of those wide players up the park, Romadal or Thomas, and they really are causing problems with just the lone striker bent up there. But it's, it's proving that it's not a negative system at all if it's played correctly. Yeah, too many of the Charlton fans here will be complaining about negative football. It's a bit more positive from Greening towards Earnshaw. Good defending, though, by Chris Perry. Here's Murphy. Romadal's header in, Smertin trying to win back possession, but hooking the ball out of play. Certainly got... Uh, Plenty of things to say, Brian Robson. I don't think at the moment the players are carrying out his instructions. There's the long ball ahead. Davis misjudging it slightly, which is dangerous when Darren Bent's around. Here's Jerome Thomas. Goes for the shot again. This time a sting is taken out of it on its way through. There's that pace again. We're playing this system. I think it's imperative that the lone striker has pace. Bent's got it in abundance. Davis, shall we say, mistimes his the ball in the air, and all of a sudden. Charlton were onto something from nothing. There's Kishishev showing some neat skill. He's the uh, unsung man, really, in the uh, midfield three that Tony's been talking about. Kishishev does all the all the uh, hard work, donkey work, if you like. Well, an excellent signing, though, John. I mean, he's played right back, right side midfield, now centre midfield, and really is Mr. Reliable. With tennis in midfield at the moment. Well, that's a inadvertent pass through for Woolwork. He's got support now. Look for the cross rather than the shot. Came back off Perry. That's a wonderful pass by uh, Woolwork. It's not only failed to find a teammate, it's put West Brom under pressure. With Kishishev finding Murphy. Murphy through to Darren Bent. It just came off his heel. Almost too accurate that pass. Clement forward for West Brom. Campbell is there with the nod down for Earnshaw. No sign yet of last season's heroics from him. Smirt in forward. Here's Romadal. Jerome Thomas, got Powell alongside him if he needs him, but he's gone for Kishishev instead. Chris Powell, frustration from the West Brom fans. The players haven't seen the ball for a minute or so. Exactly right, John, frustration because they can't get the ball. Look at Charlton passing the ball about, keeping it, passing it across the back. 
And eventually Albion get a tackle in and it breaks again for Cholton. Well, it's Romadal who's got an incredible pace into the box. Look at the square, Murphy surely! 2-0 Cholton and it was a wonderful team goal. And Danny Murphy's got his second of the game and Charlton are heading further and further towards this fourth consecutive away win. Well, it really is looking like the perfect away performance at the moment. They kept the ball well. Luke Young nearly lost it. It breaks out of a challenge for him. Romadal outpaces Greening. And then all you thought he had to do was pick out the pass. He does. He picks out Danny Murphy. And he has the easiest of tasks just to roll it in past Kirkland. Bit fortunate with the break in the tackle. But look at that pace from Romadal past Greening. And he just has to pick out his man. He does it expertly to find Murphy. And he just rolls it home. All important stage there. When you get to that dead ball line, you must pick out your man. And he does. That's an easy one for Murphy. Robinson. They're really finding it hard to go forward, aren't they? Can't get really down in that last third to get any decent crosses in. Finding it hard to pick passes through the middle of the park where it's really congested. Difficult afternoon for Albion. Ryderson's missed the long ball, there's Campbell! And there was the chance, and it was superbly defended by Chris Perry. Well, it's the little flick on, you can see. Comes off of a right arse and he gets his shot in. Chris Perry gets a nice block in as he slides in with a challenge. That was the something that maybe they needed just before the break, because no doubt that was going on target. That was the half chance we were talking about. However, they did score from a corner late on last week at Sunderland. There's Anderson, doesn't play, doesn't punch either, but he's got away with it. Wrong, the speedy Romadal will look to turn defence into attack. With his aim towards Thomas. He's found its target too. Davis, the man covering. Thomas again getting to the byline, playing it in. Oh. Well, it went beyond bent, but there was no one else there. And Romadal, well, he got to the ball quickly enough, couldn't do anything with it when he got there. And West Brom had possession. I think he was anticipating a challenge, John, and that was a little bit embarrassing, wasn't it? Yes, he's quick, Romadal, but he's not always the most tenacious player on the field. Perry's hoist upfield. Five minutes to go. 2 0 Charlton in a one sided half at the Hawthorns. Sultan Gira. There's a break on with Robinson down the left hand side, but the pass went straight to Luke Young. But here's Campbell for West Brom and Woolwork. Woolwork's been fouled by Thomas. There you see they nick the ball off for Cheltenham, I think well, that's what they've got to do, they've got to push in a little bit further, but that means, further up pitch, but that means taking risks with the pace of Bent, Thomas and Romadal, but they've got to nick the ball off for Cheltenham in midfield, really put them under pressure so they can't keep possession and take the sting out of the game. But they're up the tempo, Albion, by pushing up a little bit further and really condensing that play in midfield. Well, they'd also want to produce a much better free kick than the one that Neil Clement produced earlier in the match, which flew a long way over the bar. He's gone for goal again. Better, but still not on target. Well, he's getting closer. He didn't go for the curler this time. He went for the drive, but... 10 yards over the first one, probably 8 yards over that time. Maybe he's just getting a little sighter for the second half. There's a few words to be spoken down in that dressing room by Brian and his assistant behind him there, Nigel Pearson. Just try and sort out what's happening to them, and now Charlton are really picking them off at ease with their passing. Yeah, we talked about Charlton's away record, but uh, West Brom's home record is very poor. Campbell's ball trying to find Earnshaw. It's a great header by Anderson away. And that's an equally good header by Watson. Zoltan Gera. Decent cross away by Horiderson at the near post. And here's Bent. Stumbled. Play continues with Greening. Has to go backwards. Yeah. Nice 
ending the half with a degree of pressure. This is Curtis Davis in unfamiliar territory, ground by the corner flag there. Tackled by Powell, but he's won it back. Good support. Gear is there. Measured cross, Campbell! Great header, but just too close to the keeper who was well placed. Well, it's taken the marauding Davis to really get him going. So he nicks the ball back off Charlton. Geary gets his cross in. Campbell, I think, should have done a little bit better with that. Didn't really have to get up high for the header. Kevin Campbell maybe would have felt that he should have scored. He's not having the best of runs, Kevin Campbell. Hasn't scored for 17 games. Last goal was against Birmingham in a 2-0 win last season. Had that been on target, we may have had a completely different second half, but as it stands, if Charlton can hold out for the remaining minute, they're in the box seat. And Kirbish we just nipped downstairs, trying to see this the Robinson. through to the break. Ball hooked in towards Earnshaw, tries to find Greening. Effort was blocked and just for a moment you sensed Earnshaw might be in there, but it was spinning away from him off the surface and into the arms of Anderson instead. You see Kerbs has just gone down there, just explaining to his wide players just to come back a little bit. They're under pressure. And then all of a sudden that 4-3-3 three, three reverts, or should revert, to a 4-5-1 when defended. Here's Darren Bent. Here's Thomas. Chinking his way around the edge of the 18-yard area. Murphy to Powell. Now Kishishev. Young wants it played deep. This is Young now. It's a towering header. Romadal controls. Young goes over. That would have been a harsh penalty award. You're right. Picked out the far post by Kishishev. He wins the first header. It comes back off Ramadal to Luke Young. I think he's in an offside position anyway. I think he just slips. Yeah, no question. We've reached the 45. There will be one minute of stoppage time. Time perhaps for West Brom. Here's Robert Earnshaw. And Greening needs a decent cross. It was a decent cross, but Gira couldn't connect. Watson has it far side. It's gone behind. Well, it's probably the last five minutes of the half that there's been some encouragement for Albion. Here you see, he got to the dead ball line one of the few times. Good cross by Greening. Gear is claiming the foul, but no foul for me. Kisichev does well to get back and defend in that situation. First half ends with Charlton Athletic in the driving seat and boos from the Baggies fans as Brian Robson heads for the tunnel to uh, try and raise his troops. Danny Murphy getting both goals, the first a penalty kick after Watson had tripped Thomas, clear cut and cleanly dispatched. And Murphy getting on the end of a Romadal cross to beat Chris Kirkland, who'd previously made two good saves. But Charlton Athletic, very, very good value for this lead. And Alan Kirbishley, who's been making copious notes all half, will be absolutely delighted. The statistic that matters is that at half-time at the Hawthorns, it's West Bromwich Albion nil, Charlton Athletic 2. <laughs> that is uh, Diamancy Kamara coming on, injured an ankle. In the midweek, Carlin Cup win over Bradford City, but seems to be OK. He's on for Andy Johnson. So a second half in which West Bromwich Albion are desperate to try and get back into this game. Starts with Zoltan Gira down the right-hand side. It's a reasonable ball in towards Campbell. Oh, that was a good strike, too, by Greening and it was blocked in the box. Positive start by West Brom in the second half. Well struck by Greening. And the block was there. Jerome Thomas coming forward at the other end for Charlton. Alexi Smertin, whose block it was, plays the ball back for Charlton. 
with his thoughts on the second half, Tony Gale. Let's see what Brian Robson's thinking, John, and it's nearly so worked at the start of this second half. Smirting just got a great block on, made him runs down the right, Gearer again gets his cross in, clear to the edge of the area, great volley by Greening, that's goal bound. Positive start though from West Bromwich Albion, needed to be two, here's Watson and Gearer. It's on his weaker left foot, but it's still a decent effort. Good start to the second half from Albion, and this is going to allow the crowd to get behind them, up the tempo, get the adrenaline pumping, and really get into Cholton already. I've earned a couple of corners in this, this second half. Diamante Kamara will take this one. Curtis Davis has gone up. In fact, he's left it for uh, Earnshaw. There's Davis virtually on the goal line. Decent curl on the corner. It's gone behind. Good marking from Chris, Chris Perry, but again, it's Gira who scored last week in the air. Just gets across the face of him, and I think he had a decent chance to get his header on that, but uh, Perry done well to get there in the end. Deep corner. Away by Horidison. All work back in. Goalkeeper needs to come, doesn't come. And Curtis Davis has scored for West Bromwich Albion on his home debut and they're right back into this game. Well, the corner was hit far to the... right to the far post there. Right, Arson got it up and away, but not far enough. Woolwork heads it back in. Stefan Anderson's nowhere. He's really fisting fresh air. Ball comes out from the right, Arson headed in by Woolwork, and look, keeper should be gobbling this one up. That's really in the air quite a long time, but Davis gets there in front of him and just gets his head to the ball and puts it into the net. But that should be the goalkeeper's ball. Nowhere near decisive enough. Well, five minutes into the second half and suddenly there's a roar from the Baggies fans. They're back in this game. They've made a positive approach to the second half with the substitution and it's paid off. We already said they had a couple of corners early second half, had a good chance right at the start, and it's just what they needed. They're right back into the game. Brian telling his team to get it, pass it about, try and pass and probe, but also really get in amongst Charlton in midfield. And I think well, that's what they've got to do now. Crowd are up for it, and I think we've got a real game in store. Long clearance, headed away by Clement. And now Green in, Kamara again. Suddenly the Baggies are playing with a little bit of confidence here. And this move is brought to a halt, but uh, play continues. The referee not awarding a foul there. Jonathan Greening down towards Robert Earnshaw. He's got the better of Chris Perry for the time being. Not much support for him. Crosses in now towards Gira. Away by Powell. The whole complexion of the game has changed now. Chantler, of course, do, do still have the lead. It's been all West, West Brom second half. Gira in, away by Smarty. West Brom have won themselves a full kick. No need to give that away, Jerome Thomas. That's a needless foul that really heaps the pressure on his team. But all of a sudden, there's no spare man in midfield. West Brom are far tighter. Cholton are not picking up the loose balls and the early goal in the second half has buoyed them and they're really under pressure. Kamara will take the free kick. Plenty of uh, teammates to aim at. Away by Horidison though. Here's Romadal. Now Kamara again. Lovely ball into Gear. There's a chance here, and he went for the pass rather than the shot, and it was too far in front of Robert Earnshaw, or it could have been 2-2. Two -two. Well, that was a great chance. I thought he could have gone on a couple of yards and really fired for the far corner instead of passing it. Good opportunity here, look. Just take it on a yard or two and really fire for that far corner. But he tries to pass it across the face of the goal into the path of Robert Earnshaw, and it's away. But I think if he had 
a shot a goal, he had two chances of scoring in the far corner, and if he pulls his shot, then Earnshaw maybe could have run it in on the far post. to pull the trigger again then, but it was taken off his feet by Kamara. Gear has got Greening to the right, and a real scramble in the box there as Charlton eventually get it away. Pressure's on, Earnshaw's running across the line, getting in behind Charlton. This really is a different game now, isn't it? And Brian changed those tactics, I thought he had to, in the first half, and be fair, he has. Watson's ball in, headed away by Horiadison, back forward by Robinson. Murphy spotted something going on in the box there. And it'll be a relief for Charlton. It was real backs to the wall stuff. Backs to the wall stuff and Brian Robson down on the lines, roaring him on. Alan Kerbishley and Keith Peacock up there in the stands have really got to sort a few things out. Got to get their team back in the game, passing the ball, taking the pace out of the game and really diffusing the situation in the crowd who are getting right behind Albion again now. Oh, that's amazing difference it is because they were all mumbling and grumbling at half time and rightly so but suddenly there's renewed optimism for those West Brom fans starting to make themselves heard oh, there, and West Brom will have a free kick quickly taken Zoltan Gira West Brom in the second half have had 84% of the possession, which when you compare it with the first half, it's quite astonishing because we were talking so favourably about how Charlton were keeping the ball and denying West Brom any kind of possession at all, and suddenly it's all changed. Look at the pressure on the ball now, though. Look at the pressure. Albion really contesting. They've got that spare man in the middle of the park, and all of a sudden the spare balls are coming out their way. Charlton can't get out their own half, and there you go, they have to play long, and Albion get possession again, and they spring on the attack. This is Curtis Davis, whose goal put West Brom back into it. His first goal for the club on his home debut. Horidison away for Charlton. Davis just thumps it away that time under pressure from Bent. And then have enjoyed the second half a lot more than the first. Pushy shove. Very silent, the Charlton fans now. Two now going forward though. Chancey ball across the halfway line and Earnshaw's found Campbell who finds Gera. Now Greening. Kamara, whose impact has been very impressive. Gera. Sprock. Much the better side at the moment. Robert Earnshaw. Now it's Charlton who can't get the ball back. Greening shoots! Not far off either. Goalkeeper went down late, but it was just the wrong side of the post. Now all of a sudden it's Albion passing the ball. They've got another man in the middle of midfield. They're picking the passes. Greening goes for the shot. I think Hannison sees that one a little bit late. You can see I think he has it covered in the end because it wasn't the best of strikes, but he sees it late. And he was struggling a wee bit on his near post. The defending for West Brom. The ball forward chased down by Perry. Keeps it away. his head up but not enough on it to trouble the keeper 
Hitch got caught under the flight of the ball and mistimed his leap because of Chris Powell, because he was always up above him. Really, if he'd have just come back a yard and then attacked it, it would have been an excellent opportunity. As you look at Steve Watson, we are going to have a West Bromwich Albion substitution. There they are. It's uh, very attacking minded. Jeff Horsfield and Nathan Ellingson are shortly to enter the fray. At the moment, the ball's still in play with. Ball back to Anderson by Smirtin. Field for the ball, Bent goes over and was pushed by a combination of Greening and Clement. This may be the opportunity whereby the substitutions come on. Field, who scored four goals this season. Premiership's joint second top scorer is waiting to come on with Nathan Ellington, Kevin Campbell, and Robert Earnshaw. The two front men departing, so it's a wholesale change up front for Brian Robson. Probably stay with that three up front, John. Keep one on the wide sides for attack, one down the middle. And fresh good. legs. Really trying to keep the pressure on Charlton. Horsfield's taken the captain's armband, incidentally, for West Bromwich Albion. Charlton doing the attacking at the moment, maybe not for long, though. This is Ronnie Woolwork. Ellington's first touch. Watson forward, Horsfield with his buccaneering style trying to work an opening there were appeals for a penalty there I think he handballed it, it was a good ball from Stevie Watson but you see as he chests it here he nearly catches it in his arms look on the chest into his arms nearly caught it played in all four divisions of the Football League Jeff Horsfield enjoyed an excellent start to West Brom's season Get ahead of me, Two against Portsmouth in a 2-1 win and two against Birmingham in a 3-1 defeat. Made him the Premiership's top scorer until he was overtaken by Darren Bent. And he's equal second at the moment with Van Nistelrooy and Harewood. This is Danny Murphy. Goals, of course, after his brace this afternoon. Bothroyd. Kamara trying to get forward. Pendled over. Going to be a free kick. Well, he does just tend to lose a little bit of control, Kamara, when he's on the run, but he gets that vital toe to it all the time. You see, he skips out one challenge, two challenges, and the third one with Kisichev gets it just again first. And this time, Kisichev blocks him off at the pass and gets a yellow card. First of the game, Chris Foy last season took charge of this match and didn't show a single card. But uh, as is ever the case, we haven't mentioned the referee much, so he must be doing OK. Green trying to flick it forward. Thomas with a lovely bit of skill. And then a disappointing final touch. This is Watson. Total transformation though for West Bromwich Albion, although given their uh, possession and dominance in the second half, let's be reminded they are still 2 1 down. Haven't completed the job as yet. Left it late last week. Here's Jay Bothroyd for Charlton. Ball is through, flag is up. Decent attempt by Bothroyd to release his strike partner, Bent. That's what he's got to do, Bent. He's got to get in behind Bothroyd when he, when he drops off in deep positions. He's not unfamiliar to that position. He played a lot of the time for Ipswich on that right-hand side last season. But he'll just be now trying to exploit getting in between full-back and centre-back. Ronnie Warwick. Horsefield. 
Ball in by Horsfield. Headed away by Powell. Greening on the volley. Blocked just about by Perry in the box. Well, it's gone behind for a Charlton goal kick, but again, West Bromwich Albion edging closer. You can see, again, another volley for coming in from Greening from the edge of the area. Chris Perry does well to react first. by uh, Anderson, Thomas trying to control, Gear is in the way but Thomas has emerged with possession for Charlton Athletic, Bothroy, and again, one two doesn't come off though with Thomas, here's Gear up, Curtis Davis has just taken the ball beyond the touchline there, ahead of Darren Bent and Chris Kirkland's out there to claim. Kamara finds Ellington inside the box, shadowed by Bothroyd. He's back with Robinson. Great cross, Powell's able to clear. Now there might be a break on for Jerome Thomas. Will he be able to outpost Neil Clement? No, is the answer. Good defending by the former Tottenham man. Wasn't going to let Thomas get goal side. There are going to be occasions late in this game now and there are going to be one on one situations. And have to defend as well as they did there. Here's Kamara. It's a great run. Fancy's a shot, Kamara. Plenty of power, but it was always rising. And he's, he's a bit like a runner race train, isn't he, John? I mean, he just comes across, he keeps running and running and running. Sometimes you don't know what he's going to do, and I'm sure he doesn't. And in the end, he gets a decent shot, and then it goes over the bar. But he really has caused problems, second half. Very direct, loves running at players. Just sense, John, that something still might break for Albion. You could hear because uh, Horsfield's been shoved in the back by Perry. The result is a free kick. Clement and Davis are in the box anticipating a possible cross from Greening. Here it comes. Good volley by Gera. But again, Anderson was in the right place to grab. Excellent cross from Greening. Nice strike, but unfortunately for Albion, too nice to strike straight for Anderson. Johnny Warwick has got gear up on this right-hand side. Well tackled, though. Good work there by the tireless Kishishev. Murphy and Warwick tussling for possession. Warwick winning it. This is Robinson. Jay Bothroyd finding Darren Bent. It's time for Charlton to try and calm it down a little bit. Oh, a possible break on, would have been, but Luke Young has carried the ball across the line. It's going to be a big final 10 minutes for Charlton Athletic to try and hold on and for West Bromwich Albion to try and force an equaliser. Just as it was last week. And Sunderland were trying to preserve their one goal lead at the Stadium of Light, and West Brom denied them at the death. All right, tussling with Smertin. Referee sees no harm in that, so Danny Murphy goes striding forward. Plays it in across field to Jay Bothroyd. And now Thomas down to walking pace for Charlton now. First half, Charlton. 
get possession. Foul there. And Darren Bent from Paul Robinson. Danny Murphy's in no hurry to take this uh, free kick. Rolls it to Smirtin. Now wants it played down the right-hand side. Smirtin plays it centrally instead. He was hoisted back, Bothroyd trying to get on the end of it, but Robinson's header has found Kirkland, who made two fabulous saves in the first half, but in the second, rather like Anderson in the first at the other end, has been a virtual bystander. Flick on towards Horsfield, carry across. Powell will be desperate to prevent a corner kick. I don't think he's succeeded. Well, there'll be a double substitution to come, but uh, West Brom have a corner kick. Seven and a half minutes left at the Hawthorns. West Bromwich Albion trailing by two goals to one. The referee has decided that the substitutions will now be made. Two players coming on are Jonathan Spector and Brian Hughes. Off come Chris Powell and the double goal scorer Danny Murphy. And Kirby, she's taken his most offensive midfield player off, it looks like. Danny Murphy, or has he? Fact, he can't Doesn't look as if Murphy's coming off. Not allowed to bring two off. Yeah. I don't know what they've happened here. A little bit of confusion there. Oh, he's allowed it Murphy now. has gone off. <laughs> Hughes has come on. A straight spot. Spectre for Powell. In the left back position. What a corner to deal with, though. Here's Kamara's corner. Ooh. Davis almost had his second. Up high, but held. Oh, a strange one there. It looks like it comes off the back or the shoulder of Davis. This is where Charlton want the ball at the moment. Young and Hughes keeping possession. That's clever by Brian Hughes. Tries to cut it back towards Darren Bent. Knocked away. Kishishev to Thomas. Felled by Gira. We've had a minute and a half of the four-minute stoppage time. Well, if you analyse the game, and what we said it was a game of two halves, I think the dominance of Charlton in that first half was a more controlled dominance. Albion have put Charlton under pressure this second, penned them in, but I think the dominance of Charlton and their possession play in the first have slightly edged this one. It looks for all the world as if Herman Horridas fancies a shot, but I think good sense has prevailed for Charlton, and Hughes has found Thomas. He'll look to use his skill to eat up some valuable time. He's won himself a throw. Less than two minutes. Thomas down in that corner. Another throw to Charlton. They won't mind this. Here's to Thomas again. He's to think he's uh, let the ball slip over the line. West Brom are going to have to... Uh, get a move on Watson hurls it forward Smirtin heads it away Spectre's header back upfield for Charlton is welcome Greening tussles with Kishishev foot up by the Bulgarian will award a free kick Kirkland's telling everyone to get out of the way so that he can launch the ball forward. Get forward, he says to Steve Watson. Never mind that, I'll take the free kick. Ball is loose in the box. Kamara takes a swing at it. Clement now. It's not a great pass for Robinson. Greening is square. It's gone back again to Chris Kirkland. 
30 seconds of stoppage time left. Kirkland drives forward, flicks off for Ryderson. Here's Gira. Are there to be more heroics from him? Zoltan Gira's ball in. Good header by Young. Knocked away by Bothroyd. Great defensive Green. header, John, by Luke Young on the far post. Gira swings it in again. They're lining up on that back post. Oh, it's come up off the keeper. My goodness me. I don't think Anderson knew much about that. Yeah, it was on the far post, ball headed down by Kamara, pops up off the floor, and Anderson, boy, it doesn't matter how you get him over, he's a bit fortunate, but he does get it over that bar. Are oh, we to have a dramatic repeat of last weekend? Here's the corner, Anderson's there and punches, not on this occasion, and Kirkland is out of his goal, and Jerome Torres surely is going to try and shoot. The goalkeeper's nowhere near his goal, it's gone instead across to Darren Bent. Bent looking to go all the way. Characteristically for a player who's having such a fine season in front of goal, he's put it over the top. But it doesn't matter because the whistle has blown and Charlton Athletic have won by two goals to one. It was the classic game of two halves. Alan Kerbish, these men superb in the first. Danny Murphy with a penalty and then a tap in from Romadal's cross. They look no way back for the baggies after that Murphy double. But then Curtis Davis gave them hope with a debut goal for West Brom on his home debut for the club and it was all West Bromwich Albion from there on in but Alan Kerbishley's defenders clung on and hung on and in the end Chris Kirkland who'd made good saves in the first half joined the attack in the desperate attempt by Baggies to get themselves an equaliser but unlike last week at Sunderland when the equaliser came right at the death it didn't come this afternoon Charlton Athletic have won four away games in a row for the first time in 68 years and West Bromwich Albion have now lost three home games in a row. The points go to Alan Kerbishley. It finished West Bromwich Albion 1, Charlton Athletic 2. Alan, it's another fantastic away win, but a hard-fought one. Well, it was. I think, um, you know, we played uh, fantastic in the first half and, uh, you know, we come in two up could have been more and you know obviously you think well you know can you keep it going and we have had a problem uh, similar to, to at Birmingham you know we played as well in the first half at Birmingham came out and perhaps wasn't quite at it and West Brom in all fairness I mean were I mean Brian must have given him a right bollock in at half time and uh, changed it around a bit and it was the physical stuff you know the balls in the box and challenges and uh, but at the end of it we've managed to hold out and uh, I like to remember the first half more than perhaps the second. Well, Danny, it's uh, four consecutive away wins for Charlton Athletic now. That's uh, some record. It is. Um, we're playing with confidence. We, uh, we seem to play well away from home. I think it suits our game a little bit. Um, of course, people will say that you know it won't last and um, the big teams will come through, but we've got to have a belief that we can maintain what we've already done. Um, I mean, it's naive to think we're going to go through the season winning every away game, of course, but the way we're playing means we, we've got a great chance. We make chances. We break well. Um, and maybe that's why our away form is so good, but um, credit to, or to all the lads because uh, it's a great start for us and one that probably people didn't predict. Last week it was a last gasp equaliser, this week it was close but not quite, so frustration I guess. Yeah, um, we were two different teams basically, first half started too slow because he did two goals and then came out second half and we were just a totally different team, I think we dominated them second half and unfortunately we did manage to get a second goal. The manager changed it around at half time. He brought on Diamancy Kamara, uh, changed the, the, the formation a little bit, and it, it seemed to work wonders. Yeah, it was. It, I think it worked very well. Diamancy, with his pace and his skills, was uh, getting past people, whereas in the first half, a lot of our runners was just playing sideways and things like that. But you know, they, um, we just all, everyone dug in. I think a lot of people were going forward without even thinking what's behind them. So that was good that we had that confidence. But unfortunately, once again, we couldn't force it, could we? So the Hawthorns have finished West Brom 1, Charlton 2. Next, over on Sky Sports 1, Warren.